do these three words go together? Outdoor, math, fun. I think that they do. I really do. I mean, do we want to be indoors all the time? Does our schooling have to be indoors all the time? Could we get outdoors? Could we get outdoors and do some math? Could we get outdoors and do some math and have some fun at the same time? I really think that we can. And so today I want to like bring some activities for you so that you can see why perhaps we should be getting some of our math outside. Hi and welcome to Learning Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, are you in shock that I said outdoor math and fun? Like even just like math and fun together? Do you know what? It really can be. It really, really can be. And whether we are homeschooling or like our children are in school and we've got like homework stuff, this will work. Okay. This is for all of us. If we're homeschooling, or we're not. Because I really think that when we can practice in our math in a fun way, we can get outside, oh, it's really just going to like stir things up for us. And so, you know, if you are new to learning life, thank you so much for watching. You know, check out some of my other videos and for all my friends who have been watching, thank you. Thank you so much for your likes. Thank you so much for subscribing and for your comments. Why would we want to get math outside? Is there any good reason for it? If you know me, yes. Yes, there are really good reasons for getting our math outside. Actually, for getting any of our learning outside. I know for me, it's that change of scenery can be like so good. And in our family, we have been doing the thousand hour outside challenge. And so, yes, we can go outside and do our math out there. Can we just bring our books out there and do it? Yes, that is certainly one way. And we will get like some benefit from that. But there really is like so much more to it when we can step outside of our curriculum a little bit and find some fun ways that we can be doing math and especially be doing it outside. So I want to look at that today, some of the benefits, and then I do want to give you some activities that we can be doing. So let's look at that. Benefits of outside math activities. Let's get outside. What do we have outside? We have sunshine and we have fresh air. Look, even if it's a cloudy day, we're getting that fresh air. That change of scenery is really good. Just being out there, like just in a different environment is wonderful. You know, we're going to be able to move more. We're going to have that less constraints. Chairs and tables can be very constraining. And for a child that wants to move, it can be, you know, a little bit too much like, oh, I'm like right here. But by getting outside and practicing our math and doing activities outside, we get to move. There is freedom. We get to explore concepts in different ways. We can get very good with our paper and pen and do that and see how it's working but what if we get to like move and use our body with it? Or, you know, we find different ways that we can practice it. I know for our littles, especially, we can look for patterns and shapes and all of that. And really, there's lots of space for fun outside because math can be fun. You know, like let's let's make it fun, especially if we have a child that's not really enjoying it. Like let's just shake it up. And it really does encourage like exploration of these ideas or exploration of the space. And dare I say it, it does encourage a little bit of risk taking. Because if we can risk take outside, we can maybe bring that inside as we look maybe outside the box on how we can do different things. So great benefits, right? Don't we want to get our learning outside for a little bit? Oh, I think so. I really, really think so. And I get it. If you have like your schoolroom and your setup and that's how you want to do it, that is great. We don't actually have that. We do our lessons like wherever. And so outside is a lot, a lot of the time. And but these ways, these activities, I can get my girls to practice in different ways that just sort of shakes it up for them. And so now let's uh, give you some ideas. Activities for outside math. There are two things that I think you should invest in so that you can get these activities outside. Painter's tape 
sidewalk chalk. Okay, two simple, easy, inexpensive things. You will use these a lot. Painter's tape and sidewalk chalk. Get yourself some. So I want to bring some activities for you and just show you how you can tweak them for whether you have younger or even older ones. Now, of course, we're not going to do all of these activities like for all the different ages, but really there can be some great little tweaks to make it harder for our older ones to still get them outside, to still get them having some fun. So a giant number line, do it with painter's tape, do it with sidewalk chalk. Like get it out there. It's great for our kids to really see as well. And they can move along the number line forwards and backwards, jumping forwards and backwards. Number lines, these are great to be outside. We're using our body. We're really firing up those neurons as we are doing it. A place value toss. Like this is great for place value. Make a big chart or maybe have plates that have ones, tens, hundreds. And as you're giving numbers, they're tossing like little rocks or bits of sticks, whatever it is, like in them. This is great to just, again, visually see things like in different ways. A number jump or throw, uh, like this is great. I like to just with my sidewalk chalk, write some different numbers. And again, it depends on what your children have been doing for our younger ones. You know, if we're practicing number recognition, then we write the numbers out all jumbled up because we want that. And they jump or toss a rock to the number that you have said. For our older ones, you know, look at what they've been learning and you know, we put the numbers out and then you give them a math problem that they need to solve. Maybe it's addition, maybe it's subtraction, maybe it's multiplication, division, whatever it is. And so then they have to be like computing, calculating. And when they've got the answer, they jump to that number. Of course, you have to make sure the answer is there, of course. But again, they're physically like moving. They're able to do it. You know, they've been that challenge, especially this is, I think, great for mental math. I mean, I think so often we do rely on calculators and calculators are a great tool, but for that mental math and to get that body involved with a number jump or a throw. Ball toss, you know, back and forth. This is really great for skip counting. And if you have children that are struggling, like with times tables, uh, even when I was working with children um, that just needed that additional help, um, and, you know, maybe had some learning issues, I would take them outside because, you know, again, that change of scenery. And this is like after they've been at school and we'd toss that ball back and forth, you know, great for skip counting, you know, two, four, six, eight, five, 10, 15, 20. And then you can apply like your times tables to it and, and be doing that. You know, this is, this is like fun. Um, it's getting us physically moving. You know, you can go slower, faster, whatever it is that you need. Now, bowling, get yourself some empty water bottles or whatever it is and set them up, have numbers written on them. And, you know, like the kids are bowling. Now, maybe they've only knocked over one pin and it said five on there. You're like, great. Can you give me two ways to get the answer? Five, two plus three equals five. Great. Eight minus three equals five. Perfect. Or maybe they've knocked over several and now they have to add them all up to give you the total. And then, you know, we add up the total. And at the end, it's not about how many pins you've knocked over, but all these different math questions that you have done. And again, great outside. And it's inexpensive. We've got water bottles. We've got stuff around that we can be doing with this. Stick tallies. This is great. You know, maybe you're playing basketball or you've been doing different things, finding different things. Break up your sticks to practice tallies instead of just like writing it. Again, anything that is hands-on and practical, like is a really good reinforcement of the things that we are learning. Studying length and perimeter. Sure, we can have our ruler inside and measure the length of the book and do the perimeter of the book. Oh, but let's get outside. You know, let's get a long tape measure. Let's jump and measure the length. You know, get one of those cheap little like... um counters, like we see the ones that they go click. Well, I found an expensive one for our homeschool co-op and we did perimeter that day and they loved it. And like it clicked over and they were able to see what their perimeter was. My girls were very sad that we had to give that back. They really wanted to keep it. They even named it Millicent and thought it was a pet. But you know what? We're outside. We're having fun. You know, we're exploring these concepts like in bigger ways, you know, from that we can then add area as well. For our old ones, maps. 
plotting. You know, we're studying maps, being able to like, where are things positioned in relation to, or the distance between like in maps, plotting it like with graph paper, being able to do that again, being outside. Can we do all of this inside? Well, yeah, but you know, plotting, it's more interesting when like we're out and moving. Nature walks, really good for our littles, especially like when we're practicing, like counting, finding patterns or shapes for our older ones. Again, like we're seeing numbers. Give me an, a sentence that puts that together. You know, the number's 42, you know, give me a sent. Yeah, I love it for that. Now, if you don't live near where there's parks or trees or whatever like that, great. Just do it around your streets because there's numbers and patterns and shapes all around us. Of course we can get out there and do it. Like, don't think, well, I can't get out. I don't live near a national park or something like that. You can do it in your streets. And what's the time, Mrs. Wolf? You know, we all know that it's one o'clock. We take one step. This is great for our littles as we are like counting and like, and following through. Now for our older ones, we can still get them to join in, but maybe we're, you know, what's the time, Mrs. Wolf? It is seven minus four. And so they're having to answer that before they can move on. Again, great for mental math, especially like for our older ones. How quick can they do it? Um, symmetry. Symmetry is all around us. Get out again, that playground chalk, you know, and we can be drawing symmetry. You know, find a leaf, trace around it, do the other half, you know, get on the pavement and looking around, you know, we're outside, find those symmetry. Telling time. I like this one. Do a big clock uh, with your chalk. On, you know, on your pavement and you've got that. And this is great for two children. You're going to be the big hand and you're the small hand. All right, show me two o'clock. And so they have to show you where those hands would be positioned. Okay, show me half past nine. And they have to show those positions. Again, we're moving our bodies in different ways and able to visualize it in different ways. Let's use blocks, great for patterns and all of that out there. Let's make obstacle courses again, because that movement, you know, height, depth, all of that is there. And for older ones, maybe do orienteering, like if you can. I remember reading books about orienteering and thought it was so cool. And I realized 46 and I still haven't done orienteering. You know, where you've got that compass and you, you've got to follow that, all of these different concepts. Can you see how easy it is? get math outside and to be practicing like outside. And, you know, you can do it even based on what they're learning. Like right now, look at that books and be like, oh, okay, we can practice this outside. I've written the numbers. We're going to practice like counting on. We're going to find those answers. It doesn't have to be inside and getting that body all fully involved and getting that brain like sort of fired up in different ways and realizing that it is also fun is a really good thing. We don't want to get bogged down. We want to shake it up and we want to do it. Do you have like any like fun outside math activities that you do that you enjoy? Because I know that I really just touched the tip of the iceberg here, but I also want you to see like it is easy that we can like apply it and we can tweak it. But I would love to know if you have some that you really enjoy doing. So comment down below. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being part of this Learning Life community. And if you want to help get these videos out, you can. You can do that as a champion and you can do that through patreon.com or check out my website, which will have like these different activities there and the benefits if you need a reminder. And that's my website, learningthis.life.